Hey guys, um, welcome to a masterclass session on machine learning with uh, tree-based models in Python. Uh, so before we begin, please do let me know if you can see my screen and if you can uh, hear my voice. Okay, great. The topic for today's discussion is machine learning with tree-based models. So why tree-based models? So people who, who come from computer science background or maybe mathematics background will be well-versed with something called graph theory, right? So in graph theory, what happens is uh, there is a node, there are nodes also called vertices and there are edges between them, right? So in case of uh, tree-based models, what happens is when we are trying to find out something, to predict something, in machine learning typically we are always trying to predict something, right? So in that case, what happens is we are taking a decision at a node and then moving on to other nodes based on the decision made. Okay, so um, that decision is made at a node and it moves down to other child nodes, hence forming a tree-based structure. So before moving on to the tree-based parts, we'll, I'll uh, give you a brief introduction of what machine learning is, what are the different paradigms of machine learning and uh, what entails with it and what are the different types of algorithms that we normally see uh, around each paradigm. So the agenda for the day would be first to know what machine learning is, an overview of that. Uh, then the different types of machine learning algorithms or the paradigms of machine learning. And uh, typically what sort of algorithms we see uh, across the different paradigms of machine learning. Introduction to the CART algorithm which is uh, basically classification and regression trees. Then we'll do a quick introduction of what decision trees are actually the base of the tree-based models in uh, machine learning. And uh, then we'll be talking about how to split a particular node in a decision tree and uh, how can it decide that based on what parameters or what indices uh, do I make that decision. So once uh, we are through with that, we'll go into something called ensemble methods for uh, machine learning, where we use multiple learners, as we call it. Uh, so we'll talk about random forest, uh, what is uh, bagging, what is boosting, and then a bit uh, we'll talk about um, gradient boosting and extreme gradient boosting. Okay, so first, uh, what is machine learning? So uh, machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence uh, um, that provides uh, com computers with the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Machine learning focuses on the development of computer programs that can change when exposed to new data. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that uh, when we're trying to write a program for printing say natural numbers from one to hundred, okay, and um, we can do that easily using programs. So if someone asks you to print all the even numbers between one to 1,000, you know you have to set a counter and you have to increment it by two and uh, we start with two and then keep printing, right? So that is how we print uh, even numbers uh, from one to 1,000. But the computer is just understanding what you are instructing, right? It's not learning anything. It's not, it is not being given any data. So, uh, what about it talk I talk about something where uh, there's no not uh, explicitly something which is not explicitly programmed which are making the computer learn to do just uh, uh, like a child right when a child um, is born the child does not know how the world works uh, the child does not have world knowledge so what uh, it sees around from the child's parents or relatives, um, elders, right? So the child learns slowly how people talk, how people walk, um, different things about world knowledge. For example, the child uh, will know that um, if, if I put my finger in, in the fire, I'll get a burning sensation, right? So that might come as an experience, which is called learning, and it might also come as a sort of already adopted knowledge which is passed on from parents right so when we are trying to teach the computer to do such things 
where we are, we are giving it a data set and it is trying to learn something based on that data set that is called machine learning where the machine is actually learning something right so people uh, keep talking about deep learning and machine learning so artificial intelligence is not only machine learning and deep learning right so there are there are other parts of artificial intelligence also machine learning is a method of solving artificial intelligence problems for example uh, we have three major methods of solving uh, artificial intelligence problems first is called rule based for example uh, when we are trying to build say um, a grammar for a particular language we'll need the rules for 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 that language those rules might be different uh, say for hindi and uh, yeah correct uh, uh, rule based is is one of the methods of solving uh, artificial intelligence right so what i'm trying to say is say for a particular language i'm trying to build a grammar okay to understand the grammar so if you have seen an application uh, called grammarly it is based on understanding what you are writing is correct or not so that is what uh, that tool is all about right so how does it do it um, it, it cannot learn the entire stuff right it, some rules have to be put into it so machine learning started uh, around 1980s in in a proper way before that here and there there were some statistic methods which used uh, probabilistic modeling but um, from the 80s the paradigm of machine learning started before that mostly it was rule based so even now uh, there are certain uh, tools that are built based on rules okay so what machine learning does is it learns the rules automatically but if the rules are um, if the number of rules are very small for a particular problem we don't need to train the computer to learn the rules right it it is given the rules and it can operate based on that right so that is one way of solving artificial intelligence problem the other way is the statistical method where it has a data set and from that it infers the rules okay so machine learning is the first way of doing it and deep learning basically is a part of machine learning where we used uh, deep and dense neural networks to solve problems and it requires huge amount of data so in short that is what uh, ai machine learning deep learning and rule based models are all about okay so um, there are these are the three different paradigms of uh, machine learning first is called supervised learning then uh, reinforcement learning and unsupervised learning so supervised learning is when i'm teaching someone to do it right uh, so for example uh, as i said that the knowledge can be adopted from something so if the parent is telling the child that uh, okay if you put your hand in the fire it will burn that is called that is called supervised machine learning okay and um, it is based on some teacher signal or a, a guiding signal right so an example of supervised learning would be understanding the sentiment of a particular review or understanding if a picture contains a cat or a dog that is called supervised learning so what uh, how do we solve this problem we give the machine a data set and uh, there is an algorithm that learns from that data set right that is called a supervised learning algorithm so uh, when it is given say around 10000 movie reviews and all those reviews are annotated with either a positive uh, annotation or a negative annotation right that is done that is uh, done manually by say uh, people um, who are annotating they are called annotators right so uh, what the machine does is using the algorithm say a, a supervised machine learning algorithm like decision tree which we will learn today right so it it looks at the data set and tries to understand uh, if uh, given a new sample new movie review it will try to predict if the uh, sentiment in that movie review is positive or negative okay and again uh, for uh, given an image it is it can either contain a cat or a dog so it is again given a 10000 or say 20000 images all of them uh, labeled with either cat or a dog uh, or a dog label so the algorithm will automatically learn what features are there in those image uh, that differentiate between a cat and a dog this is done automatically right? 
that that is called supervised learning okay so for uh, reinforcement learning as i said so the child puts its hand in the fire and learns that okay if i put my hand in the fire i'll burn my hand okay there is a burning sensation that is not not great that is called reinforcement learning the way you train dogs right if it does something correct you give it a reward if it does something wrong you uh, say give it a time off that is called reinforcement based learning unsupervised learning is where you don't give any guiding signal and based on the inherent intrinsic properties of the data the machine uh, automatically learns okay so for example um, if i want to categorize uh, people based on say what sort of movie they might like okay so uh, maybe older people would like old movies and uh, like younger people would like newer movies that based on that assumption i will i will uh, form buckets of people with uh, respect to ages right and then based on that i'll try to learn what sort of movies they like or don't like so that is called unsupervised learning where we do something called clustering in supervised learning what we do is called classification okay reinforcement learning is like teaching a robot how to walk uh, on a path if it goes the wrong way we tell it okay this is wrong so don't go that so next time it will not do that that is called reinforcement learning okay okay so uh, moving on let us look at the framework for machine learning algorithms which have mostly covered so supervised is basically where we are giving the algorithm a signal teacher signal or a guidance to learn something for example the the one with images annotated with either a cat or a dog that is called supervised so supervised learning has two parts one is called classification where we are trying to identify a particular class in this case dog is a class cat is a class for in case of the sentiment uh, case which i said positive is a class and negative is a class okay and what are the different types of algorithms that we use for classification purpose we use uh, k nearest neighbor uh, trees decision trees logistic uh, regression based classification nai based uh, support vector machines okay so we'll be looking at decision trees today for regression again we use a uh, decision tree and random forest so what is regression in case of classification we have a pre uh, predefined set of values for example the movie review should either be positive or negative okay we can't say that it was partially positive and partially uh, negative okay so we have to tell one of the classes so the categories are fixed pre decided in case of regression it's a prediction of a continuous value for example if i'm trying to predict uh, house rent in a particular area so based on what sort of people live there okay uh, based on the income of people living there or based on certain other features i can decide what should be the average house rent of a particular region so that's a value right that is not a predetermined uh, case it's not a predetermined category so that is called regression okay regression can be either linear or polynomial based on the problem and uh, decision trees logistic regression random forest are used for both regression and classification purposes unsupervised uh, paradigm as i talked about clustering when we are putting data points into buckets based on their features like uh, as i mentioned the problem of when people uh, what sort of movie people will like so based on their age groups i'll be clustering people okay so i can use other features also then we have association analysis association analysis uses um, algorithms like a priori or fp growth where we are trying to find association between items in a data set for example if i am i have a supermarket and i want to place items so that it is uh, my sale goes up and it is easier for people to access things right so i'll use an association analysis algorithm like how i'll i'll see association between bread butter and jam so i know if people buy bread uh they should have easier access to butter and jam right so that will be sort of on their shopping list so whenever i'm making a shopping list whenever i read, write bread i'll be writing butter and jam after that right so uh keeping these things uh together would obviously impact the sales so that is how association analysis works and i don't need to uh have any teacher signal for that i don't need to have any annotation for that 
uh, based on the patterns in which the users buy products i can actually associate products with each other okay so surendrax is there any hands on on this topic uh, so surendra the problem is we don't enough have enough time for the hands on right so one hour session uh, we'll be covering an overview of uh, decision trees today and an overview of machine learning in general okay so uh, the third is the reinforcement learning part which i talked about where uh, we are teaching uh, a machine to learn along the way so when it is uh, doing something incorrect we are giving it a uh, punishment and if it is doing something correct uh, we are trying we are trying to sort of give it a, a reward okay so reward and punishment based thing so uh, a typical algorithms for uh, clustering are k means uh, there are other algorithms like uh, hierarchical clustering db scan svd uh, principal component analysis then uh, there are several other okay so uh, classification algorithms as i said we are trying to classify a record so is it cold yes or no predefined labels right will you go to work today yes no or maybe three classes so for example in uh, case of uh, identifying the sentiment of a particular text say a movie review i can have positive negative and neutral right someone who has said that it the movie is okay okay it's not very good it's not very bad it's okay so it's a sort of neutral so there so we have three classes in that case right? if there are two classes it's called a binary classification problem or a two class classification problem if there are multiple classes as in this case it's called a multi class classification problem so these are predetermined set of categories that we have to put the data in the buckets are fixed and we have whenever a new data set comes new data point comes new sample comes based on the features of that uh, new sample we have to put it in one of the buckets say in this case it will be either yes or no so what will i teach the machine how to understand if it's cold or not based on the temperature right so if the temperature is low it is cold if it's high it's not so based on that particular feature it will decide okay so that is how we use decision trees okay so we'll come to that in a bit so regression is predicting numerical values okay so for example what will be the temperature tomorrow or say on the 5th of april 2021 so how do people predict temperatures if you uh, look on um, google weather you'll see that there are predicted temperatures for different days predicted weather for different days so how do they do that based on the previous data set so it's it's, it's a supervised algorithm okay so uh, regression means we are predicting a value so how do they, uh, how are they doing that based on the data data of the previous years so for april 5 2021 i'll see the data for the last 10 years okay and there are other certain recent uh, condition that we, conditions that we have so based on that we'll sort of try to predict so the nearer the date the better the prediction becomes because the recent data set of the weather would be available so again uh, if we am trying to uh, see how much discount uh, you can give on a particular item okay so uh, say i'm trying to predict uh, say during the big billion day sale what how much discount i can give for a particular item so that is again a regression problem okay i'm trying to predict that before that day comes so that is how these companies like flipkart and amazon work so how much discount should i give that people will buy this product more and how much is an admissible discount obviously so classification versus reg regression classification predicts a categorical outcome is it either cold or hot in case of regression we are predicting a continuous value or a continuous outcome what is the temperature going to be tomorrow if i am asking if it is going to be cold or hot tomorrow it's a classification problem if i am asking the temperature for tomorrow it would be a regression problem so uh, coming back to the cart algorithm so uh, cart algorithm is basically uh, short for classification and regression tree so as i said decision trees are used both for classification and regression 
So this is a typical scenario where I've taken a data set and I divided it into a training data set and a testing data set. Okay, so uh, CART algorithm provides the foundation for uh, decision trees, random forest and boosted decision trees. So let's move into the algorithm. So suppose I've given a data set. I'm given a data set that um, if the color is green and the diameter is three, it should be a mango. If the color is yellow, again, the diameter is three, it should be a lemon. If the color is red and the diameter is one, it should be a grape. So if you see line number three and five, they are similar. Yeah, right. So which basically means that uh, the same data set has come again. It's not a repetition. When we are trying to uh, get a data set, the same data can, can get repeated. That's okay. In that case, that for those particular cases, the prediction becomes even better. Again, sometimes if it's yellow and the diameter is three, it can be a mango as well. So the entire data set is passed on to a root node. As I said, we'll be talking about nodes now and we'll be taking a decision at a node and then moving forward into child node. Okay. So how do we take a decision? We have to get a condition. So on what do we take a decision? On what feature do we take a decision precisely? So when I'm given a data set, it can contain several features. In this case, I have two features. So I'm trying to, based on the color and diameter of a fruit, I'm trying to predict what fruit it is. So for a human being, it is very easy because we have associative memory, right? We know that uh, when I'm seeing the shape of the fruit, the visual of the fruit, I know I have seen it before. I know it's a mango, right? but the machine does not. So it has to learn based on features. We also learn based on features, but the way that human beings learn is more like associative memory or episodic memory. So in deep learning, these things are getting modeled nowadays over the last four or five years. But previously, we have, when we have to start with AI, we have to go through the different uh, ways of learning these and uh, all these things that I was talking about like associative memory and episodic memory. These are just mostly in theory level. The models that are sort of trying to implement this are not that good yet. Okay, so anyway, so what I'm trying to say is based on the color and dimension of a fruit, I'm trying to predict what fruit it is. So first, which of these two features should I take so that my split becomes better? So I can split more number of fruits into separate categories. Okay. So if I see red, red is only for grape, right? So if I split at red, is color is equal to red? So I get if the color is red, then it is definitely a grape according to this data set. Okay. If it is not red, it can either be a mango or a lemon. Right. So these are the three data points. One, two, and four, which go in the false direction. Right. So this is the critical part. What feature should I take to and what value of that feature should I take to make the decision? That is what we'll be learning. Okay, so how that is how decision trees work. Okay, so if this is a classification case. In regression case, also uh, the, it it follows the same uh, same 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 method. Okay. Okay, so now you can see these subsets become the input to the two child nodes added to the tree. So this is the data set that comes into the root. And now when I've split it, is the color red? Yes, the color is red. It's true. Then these are the two data points, right? Three and five, which move into this particular node. At this node, I have nothing to decide. I already know it's a gray, right? So this node, which has only one label, is called a pure node, which means I don't have to split it further. Okay. But at this node, I still have to decide. So what is my problem? My problem is based on the color and dimension. I have to finally decide what fruit it is. Okay, so I will take different decisions and finally arrive at a conclusion. So if the color is red, I know it's a grape. I don't have to take any more decisions. So this is called a pure node. Over here, I have more than one labels. This is called an impure node. In the next few minutes, we'll be learning how to measure how much impure a node is. And 
based on that we will be taking a decision the more impure a node is the less it has a chance of splitting or will not be using that node will be not using that feature per se to split that node for example if we have we had used dimension here if we had used dimension here that dimension is 1 again we would have got grapes here and the same data it would have been split in the same data set right the dimension 1 is only for grapes so which feature to use so that the impurity of the resulting child nodes is minimum that is the decision uh, that we will be taking that is the method of how decision trees split into child nodes which will be learning to okay so what is the goal given a basket of fruits based on the color and dimension of the fruits i'll be separating them into different bowls and each bowl will contain a separate fruit okay that is the goal of the decision tree right so this is the basic uh, methodology followed for trees right for tree based algorithm so i have a basket of fruit i check if it is red or not okay or say i check if it is not red if it is not red then it goes here and if it is uh, red it goes here. so this becomes a separate category pure not complete okay so the goal is to unmix the labels moving down the tree in other words we produce the purest possible distribution of labels at each each node so whichever feature i might in this case we have two features right we have two features we might have up to around 1000 features for a particular data set so which feature do i start with so that the resulting nodes are the purest compared to the other features so that is the decision that we are going to take so that the level of unmixing of the labels is maximum so what is the trick the trick to build an efficient decision tree is to understand which question to ask basically which feature to select right and to do it one needs to quantify how much a question helps to unmix the label so in this case first i ask if the color is red if it's true i already know it is perfectly unmixed which means it is a pure node here i again ask if it is green so if it is green it will be definitely a mango but if it is yellow it can either be a mango or a lemon okay. again this node will be pure this node will be impure we cannot ask any questions for dimension because all of them are same we have to pick this this particular feature here which is obvious from common sense if we use our matrix for impurity also we see that it will take we have to tell that we have to split based on the color of the fruit okay that feature we have to see so the first metric that we will talk about is called the gini impurity okay so at this node the gini impurity will be zero so how do we calculate the gini impurity for a node it is 1 minus the sum of the square of the probabilities of each node okay so what does pi mean let us look at this node there are two data two data points here right both are for grape so what is the probability of the first one 1 by 1 by 1 right or say 1 by 2 and again 1 by 2 right so in that case what will happen we'll do 1 minus so it's the sum of the probabilities of each of the cases here that we have what is the probability of a grape here it is half or 1 the probability of grape is 1 here right so both of the cases it's a grape there is no other case here so there are three cases two are mango one is lemon so it's 1 minus 2 by 3 whole square minus 1 by 3 whole square how much does that come to 1 by 3 is for lemon we are cons we are so what are we trying to you are not you guys are not getting the point here what we are trying to see is the labels here how many labels are there? we are trying to find pure nodes based on the labels if one node contains only one label one type of fruit only one fruit that is grape here so don't think about these features think about the label that we are trying to predict so what is the goal of the problem 
we want to predict what fruit it is right so we have to find pure nodes so why we are trying to find pure nodes so that we take such decisions so that when we take those decisions we can land up on a node where all the cases are same so we can tell with surety that okay this is a grape so in this case if i see the color is red okay i know it's grape next thing i'll if it is not red i'll see if the color is green if it is green i'll tell for surety it's a mango if the color is yellow then i can't say it's, it either can be a mango or a lemon because after this we can't split it any both the values are same so oh, till here we can say it's a pure so over here when we are calculating the gini impurity what we'll do is it's 1 minus 2 by 3 whole square minus 1 by 3 whole square let me try to put it down 1 minus 2 by 3 whole square this is for the mango part okay and next minus 1 i'm really bad with this guys so just try to bear with me whole square so what did this come to 1 minus 5 by 9 correct this part is fine this is equal to 4 by 9 which is equal to 0.4 great so uh, this is how we sort of find the gini impurity so this is 0 and this is 0.4 so how do we find the impurity of a split this is just the gini impurity of find of the nodes so what we need to find out is the gini impurity of of a particular split so what we do is we find the gini impurity of each of the nodes we sum them up and we subtract that from the original gini impurity of this node if the gini impurity is positive then it's impure so the one with the least split impurity the gini impurity of the split will be selected okay i don't think you got that part but that is sort of an advanced thing you need to understand only here what gini impurity so why is gini impurity a gini index used to select the best question to ask at each point or the best feature to select at each point and which value of the feature to select right using these questions the decision tree is built recursively on each of the new nodes there's no further question to ask so here we don't have any more questions to ask all the questions have exhausted exhausted because we can't split this anymore here what we'll be getting is here what we'll be getting is yellow yellow 3 3 mango and lemon we can't split this any further because these are all same right so over here we are getting a pure node here this is pure and this is pure so if these are the two questions that we are asking this one and this one then we can land up on pure nodes but if these this is the path that the new sample takes the color is neither red nor green if it is yellow then yellow then is very difficult to answer that question okay for this particular data set we have shown only five uh, data points right there can be more which will which will be able to uh, through which will be able to again break this node okay so moving on so this is what happens right first we ask if it's red if it's red we know for 100% if it's a gray if it is not red then this is what we are left with gini impurity 0.44 for this what do we split here we test if the color is green if the color is green then we have 100% mango which means it's definitely a mango if it's not red but the color is green so when we uh, get the uh, new sample it's say the uh, it's a mango it's a green mango so we see, come here we see is the color red no false now we ask is the color green yes so it's a mango so we have classified that example into a mango now uh, say we come here the color is yellow 
we come here is the color red no is the color green no then it has a 50 percent chance of being a mango or 50 percent chance of being a lemon but not a grape so we have reduced the probability of some of the classes we have come down to two classes only it can either be a mango or a lemon that is the uh, distribution that we have at this time so i'll quickly run over what decision trees have we have actually covered uh, most of it so in a similar way let us take a real life example to understand what a decision tree is it is a graphical representation of all possible solutions to a decision based on certain conditions just the one that we saw suppose i want to take a job which offers me a minimum salary of 50000 i have commute time of less than 1 hour and i'll get free coffee so these are my conditions based on which i want to take a job okay so let me look at the different job offers that i have first job offer comes in is the salary at least fifty thousand dollars no reject second job offer is the salary at least fifty thousand dollars maybe it's fifty five thousand okay yes the commute is less than one hour the commute is two and a half hours reject third one is the salary greater than fifty thousand yes it's fifty thousand dollars okay commute less than one hour commute more than one hour no it's not more than one hour it's 45 minutes of travel okay so no the commute is not more than one hour does it offer free coffee unfortunately it does not decline the offer fourth job offer is the salary at least fifty thousand yes it is it's, say it's fifty eight thousand is the commute more than one hour no it's half an hour does it offer free coffee yes it does accept the offer so this is like a decision tree and these are the nodes and we have already seen such cases right so in this is a real life example of how human beings take a decision and based on that exact model of decision tree theory we have designed some, something called a tree based model which is a decision tree and which is based again on the cart algorithm so how does a decision tree algorithm decide where to split we already know uh, this question right we have learned it ahead of time so genie index through genie index the measure of impurity used is in building decision tree in car but genie index is not the only way of deciding it we have other methods also one is called reduction in variance okay so in specifically in case of uh, regression problems we see nodes where the variance uh, splits for which the variance of the entire data gets reduced which means the span of the data is less it's less scattered we'll sort of choose those nodes with those features okay this is specifically in case of regression problems entropy and information gain are the same thing basically information gain is uh, formulated by entropy information gain the less entropy is there in a system the more is the information gain. so what we're trying to calculate is at a node are we gaining some information so at a root node i have the information say i okay so how information gain works is say i have a, a root node and i i can split into two nodes this one and this one so now uh, this is my root node the information gain here suppose is say ig or uh, say you can put it i irc so root node information so this is child one so it's i1 and this is i2 information gain of i2 so what i'll do is i'll add the information gain of both of these so what i'll test here is is i1 plus i2 greater than or equal to the information gain at the root if it is not then there's no point in splitting if i'm not gaining any information okay so that is how information gain works and how do i calculate i1 and i2 it is again based on the probabilities okay uh, it is the minus of log of the 
PIs. That is how we formulate the entropy. So I1 is basically 1 minus sum over the log of PIs. Okay, the, in the previous case, it was 1 minus for Gini index. For Gini index, we saw it was 1 minus sum over square of the PIs. In case of entropy, it is 1 minus sum over log of PI. So this is how I calculate the I1 and I2. So entropy is this part basically. This is entropy and 1 minus that is the information. gain. So this entire thing which we have here would be the information gain. Thanks a lot guys. That's all from my side.